The multi-billion dollar Terminal C has officially opened at MCO, Orlando's International Airport, meaning your next trip to Disney or Universal might kick off with a bit of a different start. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. This is a... This is a hike. And here's a quick review and walkthrough of the brand new addition to Central Florida. There's a ton of good, which is great, and a little bad, but nothing terrible. So here's everything you need to know from someone who has a weird obsession and fascination with airports. First things first, Terminal C is nowhere near where you're accustomed to going when landing at MCO, found over a mile south of the regular terminals. Terminal C is the new home for a few international airlines, but potentially, more importantly to many of you, the new home for JetBlue. To access C, you'll either have to drive up to the terminal, which again stands on its own on the south side of the property, or take the relatively new air train addition that connects the main building that houses A and B. The parking structure at C has been around for a while, so the train has been running for some time, though now with actual commercial flights taking off every day from C and people having no idea how to drive there and just going to the regular terminals, expect ridership on the people mover to rise. Unlike the other terminals, anybody can ride this new train as the station sits outside of the TSA security check at Terminal B, where the other air trains that you're probably accustomed to taking in MCO sit behind security. Speaking of trains, Terminal C is the home of the upcoming Brightline train station that will connect passengers to other parts of Florida as well, but that's not open yet. That is coming in 2023. Now for the good part. Once inside the new terminal, you'll never care to step foot in the other terminals again. You do have a bit of a hike from the air train as you'll have to make your way through a parking garage, but MCO was employing someone in a Pargo or a little shuttle to shuttle people back and forth, which wasn't necessary, but I guess it was a nice free service. I crossed the bridge over the new drop-off area and was welcomed with signs greeting me as one of the first passengers to use the terminal. How nice. First thing you'll notice is the massive, and I mean massive, ceilings. Everything feels so open. The check-in process at the terminal looks similar to the new LaGuardia terminal in New York City, if you're familiar with that, and has tons and tons of self-service kiosks. There's live music and really a much more relaxing atmosphere compared to the chaos at A and B. To be fair, this footage is from the first week of JetBlue operating out of there, and obviously the foot traffic is going to be substantially less than A and B's, where pretty much every other airline in existence <laughs> continues to operate out of the ladder. The TSA security check was interesting. The standard line looked horrific, and quite frankly, I didn't stay long enough to be able to tell you how quickly it moved. This was at 5 p.m. on a Saturday. The machines are the newer ones that automatically run trays to you and through the scanners, so that's nice if you're not used to it. After going through security, get ready to walk. And here is the biggest downgrade. Some of these gates are far, and I mean far. The walk from security to the main part of the terminal is a small hike in itself, but if you need to get to a JetBlue gate, forget about it. Forget about it. You better stretch those legs. There are no moving walkways or shuttles, and it is a journey, so prepare yourself. Now for more positives. The center of the terminal has stores dedicated to Orlando's three biggest theme parks. There's a Walt Disney World store, a Universal Orlando store, and a SeaWorld store. SeaWorld's was standard and nothing to write home about. Disney's included a spectacular model of Cinderella Castle covered in the 50th decorations, which was cool, but the store itself didn't stand out. It was very similar to the one in the old terminal. Universal's, on the other hand, was the best of the three with items dedicated to rides that no longer exist. There's a Hagrid's roller coaster photo op, and a really well done screen showcasing Hogwarts and a dragon that actually runs up from one wall all the way across the ceiling. There's an entire second floor dedicated to Harry Potter as well. Universal definitely takes the uh, cake for the best theme park store in the new terminal. The food options in the terminal are a bit scarce right now, but a Shake Shack, Chick-fil-A, and a diner are incoming. There's a premium lounge accessible to first-class international travelers and to people who own the Venture X card from Capital One and the Amex Platinum card. This will be allegedly over 10,000 feet, which is which is uh, pretty ridiculous. But I guess you have to fill the terminal with something. Finally, the last thing I want to touch on is the really nice display 
right at the center of the terminal. It features three over 20 foot tall screens depicting different aspects of nature, though one had a bit of an error while I was there. All in all, if you're flying into Terminal C, get ready to walk, because it is a tremendous amount of walking. But it also feels like you're finally flying into an airport worthy of being the stop on your way to Disney or Universal. I loved it. I think you will too. It's one of my favorite airports I've been to this year, at least the terminal is. Though now I know I'll be disappointed whenever I have to fly into the regular old terminals aboard Delta, Spirit, Frontier, and American, and whoever else flies to Orlando. To see more of the new MCO, check out the full air train ride from Terminal B to Terminal C to really grasp how far this terminal is. We'll also have walkthroughs of the Disney Universal and SeaWorld stores coming up later in the week. That'll do it for this video. If you like what you saw, be sure to subscribe, click that bell icon. Hello, bell. This way you're notified whenever we come out with new content. I've been your host, Brian, and I'll talk to you soon. If you're flying, stay safe.